Hello and welcome back to the She Gallery Show. Thank you for being with us today. Today we are here with Blake Jones. Thank you for being with us, Blake. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. You are live with us today at She Gallery and you are welcome to join the conversation at any point by calling us at 312-738-1060. That phone number will be found on the bottom of the screen throughout the segment. Please remember that you can always link up with us through our website at sharinghisenergygallery.net. You can always contact us directly through there and you can always check out our previous segments that we have had since the beginning of time here with CAN TV. We thank CAN TV for this platform for allowing us to broadcast live. Now we're gonna jump in into our segment today. We've been talking about the evolution of graffiti history earlier this year with Trickster. And um, during this segment, we've been introducing artists that have worked on this production spectrum led by one of our innovating artists that um, we started off with here with She Gallery, Paveway. Um, that was artist Pease who led this production spectrum where he gathered uh, many crews, graffiti crews and individual artists to work together, both graffiti artists and street artists. Um, earlier in the season, we've talked about the war between graffiti and street art, and then we've also talked about the evolution. And now we're talking about uniting and using art as a form of um, healing. Um, earlier the season, we met with one of the artists, Melt, who talked to us a little bit about healing through the arts. He grew up in the neighborhood, um, in many neighborhoods of Chicago, actually, but he experienced um, violence in his home here in Little Village, um, very close by us. We've talked about Little Village, and today we have a really special segment because we have an artist that is on the other side of the spectrum, um, the spectrum. And uh, we say this because we're talking about graffiti roots, and then we're talking about paved way into street art. So one of the artists that we had that Peace invited, or actually Cosmo invited, mm -hmm. to be part of this production, and that was the beauty of this too. It was so organic in that sense where Cosmo was invited, and then she invited Blake, and then suddenly they're working on a production together. And we will talk more about that production, and we will have a chance to also talk more with Cosmo later on this season. Um, so in having this very organic relationship where we just all come together, graffiti artist, street artist, artist coming together to create this spectrum of peace and unity, um, we found that Blake Jones was somebody that was new to Chicago from Houston, Texas, fairly new, been here for two and a half years now. And um, you found a real community here in Chicago, very different from New York and other areas of the city. Mm -hmm. But not just Chicago, he found a home in Little Village. So that was kind of cool in the sense that we showed that many years ago, this was perhaps not an area that people wanted to live in. And here's somebody completely, you know, not from here, comes in, is very comfortable in this area and way of living and, and creating these pieces here in Chicago. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about your experience and the difference in growing up in Houston, Texas and how you ended up in Chicago, including the shopping around? I think that's very cool that you ended up in Chicago when you could have been in New York or LA. Um, yeah, so I grew up the first 28 years of my life in Houston. And I mean, I loved it. It was great and everything. My whole family's still there, but I kind of hit a point where I knew I wanted to do more stuff and the stuff I wanted to do, it didn't seem to be as available to me as an artist in Houston. There, There's some stuff there, but it, I don't think it's grown to be such an art city the way it's maybe even portrayed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I also just wanted to venture away and everything. So, I mean, I took a few trips. I went to Florida, New York, LA a few times, just looking around trying to figure out. And then I came to Chicago and just really fell in love with it almost immediately and came here and almost on a kind of on a whim, like, Stayed with a friend who lived in Little Village, and he, like, two blocks away, there was a house that had a for rent sign. I walked up there, the, the owner happened to be there, filled out an application, and he approved me the next day mm -hmm. and moved here a month later. Wow. Welcome. Well, you've been here a little while now, and you mentioned that when you were in Houston, Texas, um, you were mostly, even though you've done art all of your life, you've just mm -hmm. practiced art all of your life, you were a graphic designer. That's what you actually studied. So you did some work for like newspapers, music festivals. But you didn't really like being behind the computer, always on Photoshop. You needed to like actually get out there. You want to talk to us about your experience 
um, your first time painting what was called a mural, but it was really like a window <laughs> painting. And like this really <coughs> gives a really um, good idea of the, the process of trial and error, uh. that everybody goes through this process of trial and error, and there's always room to learn. That was, uh, you want to share your first experience with your painting in, in uh, Texas? Yeah. Your first so and only, because then you came here and rocked it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I had been asked by a bookstore, a place called Brazos Bookstore, and I mean, I love them and their staff and everything. They do these summer book programs where they pick an author or a theme and have that go throughout the whole month, and the thing they asked me to do was for uh, Stanley Kubrick, the director, and so he's got a bunch of movies that are based on books like Clockwork Orange, 2001 Space Odyssey, and they asked me to do this big window mural, and it's probably like six or seven four foot wide windows, and um, they didn't really understand what they were doing. I had never done anything that big, <laughs> and so I, the first, I painted the whole mural with uh, tempera paint, which is water soluble, because they, they were like, oh, we need to be able to wash the windows off at the, the end window. of the summer. <laughs> Outside and of the window. <laughs> so yeah, I painted the outside of the building. It stormed. Like, it flooded, like, three foot. All the paint washed away. Um, the next oh, day I work. went... Out, yeah, oh. the, ne the next day I went out there again with proper paint, like some acrylic and everything. Painted it. It immediately rained again. Water got under the paint. So there were just these, these huge, like, like football-sized bubbles <laughs> of water and paint. And I had to sit there with a razor blade and, like, cut them and, like, drain them and everything. It just... Oh. It's something that should have taken like four hours, and it took like three weeks because I just kept and I kept having to redo it and redo it and redo it until it worked. I mean, it came out great, but it was such a nightmare. It made me really even question if I wanted to do stuff that big outside because it just I felt like a klutz, mm -hmm. just fumbling over every little piece of it. It's funny. So you had this experience, and you could have moved away from it, but you didn't. You grew from it, and here you are. So then you said that you had, like, literally that was your one experience with what's like a mural, which was really like a window painting in Texas, and then you come here and you're, like, doing, like... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I got here and, like, re really, as I was driving to Chicago, I was going through Instagram and just adding every single person that l stuff looked even remotely interesting, just adding on Instagram, adding galleries, adding communities and places like that that I see promoting art, and then I just started hitting everybody up. I mean, I was going to every single show every night for the first year I lived here and meeting people and everything. And luckily I just really met a lot of nice people that were supportive and it's kind of weird being like, like Cosmo, she messaged me being like, hey, do you want to come paint this mural? Like that's something I've never experienced of people sharing opportunities rather than like being really stingy with them and mm -hmm. keeping them. It's really crazy like how supportive a lot of people, at least, at least the people I've met are. Like, mm -hmm. people are sharing and caring and, you know, promoting other people. Like, I did a show at Rotofugi a few months ago, and, like, 40 people I don't even know shared it. And it was, I mean, it was crazy. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important. Like, you just mentioned that all these strangers being united by art. Yeah. And, I mean, like, just the way it's been so amazing, the way watching, the way that this movement has um, evolved so far, so earlier in the season... And last year and on and on, we've been talking about the way that graffiti and the elements of hip hop have really united, um, you know, social classes, backgrounds, you know, neighborhoods. You just, you paint, okay, you know, that's cool. And then you're part of a crew just so you could be organized um, and, and put together productions and things of that sort. So here now we are in 2019 where we're kind of breaking those barriers and it's just whoever wants to paint and be creative just do it so you no longer have to necessarily be in a crew and that's kind of like where we're at now but it's no longer just graffiti either um, it has evolved into this entire movement of street art that has led opportunities to artists like Blake to move in from somewhere else and be accepted completely accepted because that's not how it was for a lot of artists, a lot of people, that it wasn't even considered an art form. It was just something that you did um, for yourself, for your crew, later for your community. And it's turned into a really, really inspiring movement that, um, as Trickster had said, we really don't know where it's going to end up. Um, but something that we always do here is always pay respect to those innovators who have given opportunities to artists um, all over the world and to artists like we have Blake here. And we're going to take a look at some of your work, Blake. <clears throat> so here we go. 
we have murals. These are some mural productions that you have done. Now, have all these mural productions been here in Chicago? Um, I think the one, the, the window painting, I think that might be at the very bottom. But every, Oh, do we have an image of this? <laughs> yeah, I think um, I might have taken it off recently, but I, it should still be there. But yeah, these are all here in Chicago from the past <laughs> year and a half. There's so much expression. It's like so childlike, but like beautiful. And there's like the abstract and within. Can you talk to us about some of your inspiring artists? Oh, I mean, I could write a book that's just a list of names of people. I mean, everyone from like Takashi Murakami to, um, you know, Barry McGee cause like huge famous street artists. But I mean, even like, <coughs> I would say even like my top 10 favorite artists of all time are friends of mine. That's so cool. Like, I mean, people that are so stupid talented that it like drives me crazy how good they are. That's so beautiful. Who are your friends that you, um, that are your favorite artist? Oh, I mean, so like this picture right here that you're looking at, the left half of it with the mm -hmm. snail and the bird, Bonana. that's a, yeah, that's my friend Michelle, and she's a tattoo artist. And she had never touched spray paint before doing before this day. <laughs> nice. Like we, I shout outs, Michelle. Yeah, I had done it a few times, and her and I got paid to do this, uh, f like a friend of mine's garage door, and we just sat there and had fun with it. Nice. Let's talk about this show. This solo show here looks really interesting. Oh uh, yeah, that's a show that I did um, in Houston right before coming here, which is funny because I was so determined to move here that the name of that show actually is Shy Town. Oh, how cool is that? So you had a show in Texas that was called Chi-Town, right? Yes. And the, these pieces here are very interesting. So it almost looks like an installation, like you have pieces within an installation. You want to talk to us about this show? Ah, uh, yeah. So this was this idea that I had that, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I kind of took it from a lot of inspirations, like people I saw that had been like putting really ornamental stuff around frames and galleries mm -hmm. and like stuff and I was like man it'd be cool if the frame itself was like a character or just surrounded by characters that I do so I mean there's like mm -hmm. some of like the frames have legs some of them have arms mm -hmm. but um this whole show is just all black and white it looks like straight illustration and then um I just the guy let me do whatever I wanted so I just decked the place out to make it look like one big piece and what is this Etra series here? Oh, that's just like a small series of paintings I did for a show at Rotafugi, like right when I moved here. Um, yeah, I've, could, I've got like all kinds of just random stuff all over my website. Mm -hmm. yeah, why don't you talk to us about some of this random stuff? Um, yeah, so this was another show that I did in Houston that I had a friend that basically was like, oh, you like we him and I would draw all the time so I decided to not do drawings these are all paper cut collages using all spray paint so I would just spray paint paper and then cut that out and make figures and little components and little characters and stuff from it but none of there's like no drawing in it and then that wall is all the leftover pieces like all the scrap work that didn't make in the show I just covered a wall in it <laughs> Can't stay too long. Yeah, that was the name of the show. Why is that? <laughs> it was just some dumb text that my friend sent me because I was like, hey, are you going to come? And he's like, yeah, but I can't stay too long. And, and you named it that? Yeah, I just thought it was like the word can't is so dumb looking. Like, I, I think he just meant to say can't, but he's typed ain't also. It was just really silly. <laughs> it is silly. It is silly. That's cool. Um, So you were doing different type of work before you were doing graphic design type of work mm -hmm. and you were being kind of forced to do a certain type of work for a very long time right and yeah. now here you come and you have all of this freedom yeah. right now when you started with this freedom was this always the type of work that you did and then how did you move into your 3d type of work that we are going to move into so when I, yeah, I was doing graphic design all through school and even through school, I was working on like getting paid clients because I just, I knew when I graduated, I wanted to like hit the ground running and not wait around or anything like that. So, I mean, I was like, if you, um, those posters, those are all like music posters I did for local bands and then like huge bands. And like, luckily I saw that and I was like, oh, this is a way I can be creative with graphic design and do stuff I want without having to just design logos and 
like flyers and brochures for people. So I immediately was like, oh, I can do like kind of entertainment design or music design or something like that. And then. So this was a part of your inspiration that you were already doing for clients. Mm -hmm. And clearly you were practicing it. Right? Yeah. I mean, my goal ever since I just even started doing art was like, I have to figure out a way where I can have the least amount of restrictions as possible to where I can explore stuff. I mean, if you look at that stuff, there's all kinds of different things happening. Yeah. There's photos, more cartoony stuff, more like comic book looking stuff. But it was just like, that was just me practicing, trying to figure out what I want to do that's going to be like mine forever. And there's, I mean, I can look at that stuff and be like, oh, I was really into this artist at that time, like really being inspired by them. You can and see yourself grow by you, your own inspirations. Yeah, because I mean, those all those posters you just looked at, that's, Ten years, the past like 10 years of my life. <laughs> that's amazing. <coughs> and that's something really cool that art does too. Like you uh, you allow yourself to be able to reflect and go back and see how much you've grown. Um, I've talked about journals, I think earlier on in the season or, or and during our segments and how they're almost like a time capsule because you are like writing how you're feeling at that time. And you probably will never really go back and feel those exact same emotions until you actually read them. I, I feel that way anyway when you read something. Almost like when you hear one of those really old songs and it gives you that like nostalgia feeling. You almost feel like you're, you're there. But here you're reading your own thoughts, your own feelings. And it really takes you back there and you can see how much you've grown. And the same goes with art. Um, because it is a form of self-expression. Mm -hmm. And is art all of the... Um, is drawing and making the, these type of art forms the only art that you practice? Do you practice uh, music or anything else? Um, no, but I've slowly been moving into more and more stuff because, like, you said journalism. You used to write or something. Well, I, I did that like in high school, okay. and oh, I mean, a lot of it's really cringeworthy, like high school stuff. But I mean, I <laughs> right now I'm cringeworthy. Super, super heading into like um, three, like. 3D modeling and mm -hmm. augmented reality type of stuff, like bringing, yeah, bringing that stuff nice. alive. Yeah, how did you get into that? This is really cool. I'm going to try to find some images for you guys. Um, I mean, I've just been playing with it. Like, I just learned that, like, how to make, like, Snapchat filters and Instagram filters. It's all free. You can just download the apps and um, just start playing with it. And I've that's how I'm learning about it. It's just, like looking at it and then mm -hmm. very, very slowly figuring it out. It's, but I, I see it as such like a new possibility for even like street art. Like I have stickers that if you see my stickers like anywhere in Chicago and you scan them with this app, like stuff comes alive on it. Like it's moving in and like it, like it blows me away when I look at it and I just see like so much more possibility for like if, you know, if you did a mural or something or even a graffiti piece that someone could scan it with their phone or a headset mm -hmm. and a whole new thing happens. Yeah, Trickster actually was showing us this when we uh, went through the Evolution the Evolution series. He did talk to us about this and showed us some great examples. So please visit our website whenever you have a chance and please be sure to check out Trickster series of the Graffiti Evolution and um, you'll see it that this here we start in 2017 where you could also check out some other great segments that we have had but please check out uh, Trickster's Evolution series because it does touch on that and it's so interesting um, you know nobody ever thought that this would move this far like ever and I like that you point out you know coming from Texas that this is that Chicago was this welcoming um, versus other other places such as LA or, or, or New York why do you think that is? I mean, I don't even know if it's not as welcoming. It was just like when I visited there, it was so hard to understand the city. Like New York was just a cluster and like I would get I was getting lost everywhere and it just felt too busy for me at the time when I wanted to move. I was like, like I didn't feel like I was ready yet or mm -hmm. something. And I mean, maybe I'm now, I don't know, but I love being in Chicago. And then L.A. was like the same thing. Like it's beautiful there and I visit there all the time, but I didn't see it as home. Like when I got here, like I, the first day I got here, I had never been here. I took the orange line, ended up downtown somehow, and it wasn't supposed to snow. And then uh, by the time I got off the airplane and got to downtown, it snowed like 10 inches. Like it just stormed and it's I was Chicago. like, yeah, I was like, oh my God, this is, but it was so cool because I'd never seen that before. Yeah, Chicago and is special. There were just, there were so many steps that like okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. I applied for an apartment, got it the next day. I visited, like, I visited a friend, found an apartment two blocks away. I met people, like, I, 
I was meeting people and seeing art and artists that I had fawned over forever before my like moving van even got here. Like I had gone to um, Gallery F, which is like Logan Square area, and saw like people. I was like, oh my god, I've been following these people since I was like 15 years old. And I went to Rotofugu for the first time, which is like a toy store. And I was like, man, I've been buying stuff from them since I was in high school. Okay. And like, so that's cool. <laughs> um, we have five more, five more minutes. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no problem. Um, yeah, so you were very inspired by the people and, and the locations and, and that sort of thing. And it's funny that you mentioned some of these places because when I had started She Gallery, um, my class was, the business for arts class was like pretend you could do anything. And again, you know, using your imagination to get you to where you need to go. Like Blake was mentioning, where well, you just start playing with it. You know, let your imagination, allow your imagination to carry you through. And then you, before you know it, that's what you're doing. And then you're evolving and evolving and changing and hopefully um, getting better at what it is that you want to do because practice always allows you for that evolution. I don't think that practice ever makes perfect because I don't believe in perfection. That's just what I think. Um, but I think that there, we are <coughs> always evolving and there's always room for evolution, like scanning a sticker. Who would have thought that? <laughs> um, but it was during this course of, of business for art class that part of my homework was to figure out what kind of business I would run. And I said, well, a pretend business would be this gallery um, where I could showcase artists, graffiti artists that I grew up with because it was these places that were showcasing non-local -lo artists that were international artists that maybe were never really painted a train or never really did graffiti. So it was those type of places that actually inspired me to do something different. But I couldn't afford those kind of places, so I built a website. And then I still did it again, going back to my party roots of being in party productions, girly girl productions, where we would find the place, get cool DJs, promote the party, and there we were. Here we are in 2019 with the same people doing the same type of thing, but with art. And we are uniting neighborhoods and communities worldwide, and that's super amazing, super beautiful, taking these same concepts of unity, because that is what art does. Um, as long as we don't get greedy with it, you know, we always talked about the, the, the ego with graffiti, and it's like, oh, if you could just let that go, we could do so much together, um, which is a really beautiful thing, but again, paying respect always to the innovators. Um, such an honor to have somebody like Trickster here to really educate. You know, like we started Pave Way, that was um, a history graffiti show from my era, which was the 90s, and that's how we were able to work with Peace and some of the artists that I grew up with, including my brother, who is um, who taught me what graffiti was when I was just in second grade. Like, can you tag my book? You know, and, and the beauty about that is just that. Like, you, it, it forces you to have these conversations because you love it so much. So Blake, before he got here, was like, I need to find these people on Instagram. Who am I going to talk to? And then it just united. Like it was so easy to have these conversations because they saw that that's what you do. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I like what you do. I like your work. Oh, this is fun. And it does. Your work does that. It gives like a fun feeling. Yeah, you know? that's all I'm really trying to do. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of like serious art mm -hmm. out there. And just not everything has to be that all the time. It doesn't have to be pretentious or snooty. It can be fun just for the sake of being fun. And that's like, plus, I'm just not that, I'm not that good. I can't do realism. <laughs> oh, stop. I figure out what I, I figure out what I like doing and just do that. <laughs> okay. So trusting what you do, enjoying what you yeah. do and evolving with it. And how do you feel about these collaborations? I really want to show, um, is it on your website? The um, collaboration that you did with Cosmo. I thought I had saw it um, on here. It's on the very front. Like if you go to the top and click oh, my to name. the homepage? Yeah, yeah. It's should be right there. Like oh, this is where we wanted to go. Here, we have a couple more minutes here. Oh, it just went away. Sorry about that. We weren't able to, to get on. I wanted to show the production, but you can always visit, um, again, his website, and you can always visit our website where you can always link back up with him and see this um, segment in a couple of days. And you can also visit all of the previous segments that we have had since the beginning of the season, um, your collaboration with Cosmo, how mm -hmm. that, like, it was such a fluid um, production where you couldn't even tell one artist from the other, and it just it just did that. Do you have any words of encouragement or inspiration that um, you want to share before we go? The thing that I always tell people is, like, people aren't going to look for you. You need to, like, bang down their door and shove your work down their throat. That's, like, what I want everyone to know is, like, if you want people to see your stuff, you got to show it to them. 
you can't just like like there's so many people I know that are so talented but they're I don't know if they're waiting or something like they're waiting for something to happen you can't do that you have to kind of make it happen yourself yeah. and that's really that's like the biggest encouragement that I was taught and you've done that and that's why you've made it this far thank you so much for being with oh, us thank Blake. you so much we look forward to future productions with Blake Jones thank you for being with us we'll see you next week